to probability part four. From part three, we looked at the addition rule. That is what we focused on, the addition rule for mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive events. And we did explain what mutually exclusive events are and what non-mutually exclusive events are. And we also concluded part three by looking at marginal probabilities. Today, we want to look at something that is slightly different but almost similar. Now, what we are going to do, we want to look at what we call conditional probabilities. Conditional probability. Now, as we look at conditional probability, we want to also define what we mean when we say the two events are dependent and also the independent of the events. All these terms are not new. All these terms are not new, but we want to put them into context of probability. Dependent, we know when we say, ah, this one it depends on this one. Independent, we know what we mean. Conditional from the word on condition that. So what is conditional probability? Suppose we have events, suppose we have, suppose, uh, a and B are events, are two events. Now, probability of A given B, you see how we write? This means the probability of A occurring given on, on, on condition that B is already occurred. So that's a conditional probability. And we can also have probability of B given A. So these are, this line is given. Probability A given B. Probability B given A. So this is the probability that A occurs given that B is already okay. In other words, you are told that if A B is okay, now what is the probability that A will okay? Event A is okay. Now what is the probability that B will okay? So that is what we call conditional probability. I will give you the formula for probability A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B over the probability of B. Now let me give you the formula for probability B intersection A. What changes here is probability of A intersection B over probability of A. I want you to take note that some texts will say probability B intersection A. And perhaps what you must take note of is probability of A intersection B is the same as probability of B intersection A. This is very, very important for you to note. So when they write probability B intersection A is the same as probability A intersection B, that should not worry you much. So these are the two formulas that we, we want to use. We are going to use these uh, two formulas. But what is it? What, what do we mean when we talk of conditional probability? Let me assume that uh, event, a, me, event A refers to cloud seeding. We do cloud seeding. And event B me, refers to raining. So, what is the probability that it will rain given that cloud seeding has been done? Those are basic questions that we want to ask. What is the probability it will rain given that cloud seeding has been carried out? So, that is an example of conditional probability. But one most important aspect when it comes to conditional probability is the ability to use the concept of conditional probability to determine whether events are dependent or they are independent. We are going to discuss that as we finalize this small, uh, small presentation. Now let's go back to the example that we looked at when we were doing marginal probabilities, where we had 339 farmers who are classified based on their ages and farm sizes that they own. 
So we still have the edge and we also have the length sizes which are written B1, B2 up to up to B3. So what is the probability of A1 given B2, for example? That is the conditional probability. What does it mean? What is the probability of selecting what is the probability of selecting remember A1 is a farmer aged 20 to 29. What is the probability that the farmer is aged 20 to 29 given that a, mid, a farmer who owns a medium sized farm has been chosen? You, you, now you understand what it means. A1 given B2, we are saying what is the probability that a farmer who has been chosen is aged between 20 to 29 given that the chosen farm the chosen farmer is aged he has got a medium farm probability the, the farmer having 20 to 29 given that the farmer chosen has got a medium farm so we are saying using our formula it will be equal to the probability of A1 intersection B2 divided by the probability of what? Of B2. What we make to be our denominator is the given part. A1 given B2, so that is our denominator. So what is the probability of A1 intersection B2? What is probability of A1 intersection B2? We go to A1, intersection B2, that is about 9. 9 over 330. So it will be equal to 9 over 339. Uh, I think we need our calculator here with us. 9 over 9 divided by 339. That will give us about 0 0.027. I've rounded, I will let me not round. 0 0.0265 0 0.0265 to four decimal places. What is the probability of B2? Probability of B2. Probability of B2, we go back to our data. What is the total number for B2 is 60? So it will be equal to 60 divided by 339, which will be equal to 60. We go back to our calculator divided by 339, that is about 0 0.1776 0 0.1770 0 0.1770 Okay? Finally, what is the probability of A1 given B2? Probability A1 given B2 we just divide the two. We now have everything, so we need to divide the two. So, the intersection we divide, the probability A1 intersection B2, we divide it by probability of B2. That will be probability A1 given B2 is actually 0 0.0265 divided by 0 0.1. 770. We go back to our calculator again. 0 0.0265 divided by 0 0.177. That will give us about 40%. 0 0.1497. 0 0.1497, which is about 14. 15%. Now, what is the probability of A1? Let's determine probability of A1. Probability of A1, where is A1? A1 is the, what is the total? The total is 47. So remember how we calculate marginal probabilities. We just go to the total over 
this, the, the, the same total for the same space. So the total for that event over the total for the same space. So probability A1 is the 47 over 339. And if we put this in our calculator, we will have 47 divided by 339, that is about 0 0.1386. 0 0.1386. 0 0.1386. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look at these two probabilities very closely before we define dependent and independent events. Look at the probability of A1. Probability of A1 is now 13%. Remember the conditional probability. This is the probability of A1. But we are calculating probability of A1 after a certain condition, after something has happened. So we are calculating A1 given B2. This is the same probability of A1, except that this probability is when B2 has occurred. So B2 has occurred and the probability of A1 is 40. You see, it has increased the probability of A1. The original probability of A1 before another condition, before another event took place, is 0 0.1386. So what are we saying? What are we saying? Oh, sorry. My duster is refusing to work. This is the basis of dependent and independent events. You know when we were growing up, when we, your brother is next to you, you tend to misbehave. So your behavior, our behavior used to depend on whether those who can defend us are with us or not. So the presence of my brother is influencing my behavior, you see. So the behavior as an event is dependent on the presence of the, those whom I perceive to be able to defend me. So now, if we have probability A1 given B2, there are three conditions. Probability of A1 given B2 can actually be greater than probability of A2. Or probability of A1 given B2 can actually be less than probability of what? Of A2. Or Probability A1 given B2 can actually be equal to probability of what? Of A1. So what does this mean? In the two cases here, let me call case 1, case 2, case 3. The first two cases simply means that event A1 and B2 are dependent. They are dependent. The last case, which is case 3, simply means that event A1 and A2 are independent. They are independent. What do we mean? In the first case, it means the mere fact that B2 is okay. The original probability of A1 is now bigger. So the occurrence of B2 has increased the likelihood of A2. The occurrence of B2 has lowered the likelihood of A2. This can only happen if the events are dependent. One event has occurred, it has altered the likelihood of the other event from occurring, just like what we we, 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 we demonstrated here. It means A1 and B2 are actually dependent. So when you are given a question, usually you are asked, determine whether event A and, and B are dependent or not. Your answer should not be yes and you write a composition. The answer must be numerically argued. 
How do you numerically argue your answer? Firstly, you need to compute or calculate the conditional probability of the two events. After calculating the conditional probability of the two events, you must show that probability of A1 given B2 is no longer the probability of A... Sorry, this must be A1. This must be A1, sorry. There is a mix-up here. Because we are saying probability of A1 given B2 is no longer probability of A1. Probability of A1 given B2 is no longer probability of A1. In fact, it has lowered the probability of A1. So probability A1 given B2, if it is still equal to A1, it means the mere fact that B2 is okay has no effect on the original probability of A1, and the probability of A1 remains the probability of A1. Thank you very much. This is uh, our segment on conditional probability. I would like you to take note that questions involving conditional probability will always come with the words given, or they can specify determine the conditional probability. But when they don't say determine the conditional probability, they will use define the probability of having a farmer aged this one, choosing a farmer aged 20 to 29, given that a farmer who, is, who owns a medium size farm is being chosen. Thank you very much. This is the foundation for base theorem, which we are going to look as the last segment to general probability before we move on to probability distribution. Thank you very much.